Hi, this is Andrew Twidwell. Once again, with you got this is the show DIY Do's and Don'ts. And oh yeah, I forgot to say I'm the owner of ABT Plumbing Electric Heat and Air. And I've got Rosalie Brown. We're kind of we're remote right now. We're both remote. Um, I'm down in Sausalito. You're down in LA. Um, and we're recording this early because we have some scheduling issues this week. Both of us are kind of have this crazy week coming up, but all good things. But it's just right. It's just crazy. You got. What, you've got people coming to your place or something? You're hosting some friends? I do. I'm hosting, yeah, I'm hosting people. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. Last week, uh, I had, like, extra time, and I had, like, time to do things. And I, <laughs> and then I woke up this morning, and I'm like, oh, my God, everything is due today. Like, all of a sudden, like, the universe is like, ha-ha. Like, I, I just, I, I could not have more things to do today and tomorrow and the next day than I've right. had in, in months. So, uh um, right. So weird, right? But before we get lost in story time or, uh, you know, the, the topic we're going to talk about, yeah. I just want to say happy birthday early because by the time uh, this airs, it'll be past your birthday. It'll but be past me, yeah. Happy birthday, Thank founder you. of ABT Plumbing Electric yeah. Heat and Air. You're the it's guy one, who made it It's one it of happen. those minor, minor ones. You just, you know, you just feel older. At this point in my life, though, yeah, every, every birthday is like, oh, yay, okay. Made yeah, it. I'm, I'm, I'm that much closer to the grave. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, that's one way to look at hope, it. Hope I got another 30 years left in me, you know? Yeah, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. You, you could also say, um, I made it another year and, like, I should celebrate, but you're one of those weirdos that likes to do, like, dry birthdays and healthy stuff. So yeah. I would say I would be toasting it. You know, I tell you what. I will be toasting you tomorrow, even if you are not toasting you. I'll be toasting you. Yeah. Well, I have. So, yeah, I, I haven't had a drop of alcohol since almost a month now. And it was just kind of, yeah, my sisters quit in January. And then my wife quit completely. And we were never really hardcore drinkers, but we were just like, yeah, let's see what happens if we just don't drink anymore. And um, yeah, I've, I've come to really appreciate good non-alcoholic beers because I love beer and there's some really good non-alcoholic beers. I had a Guinness last night. That was like, it was, it wasn't spot on, but it was close enough that, it, you know, it had, a, it was refreshing and it was like, all right, this is, this is almost a Guinness. Hmm. I, I was pretty, I was pretty impressed. So yeah, for all you all that have been listening to the Dr. Andrew Huberman report, um, the Huberman report on his podcast, if you've heard the alcohol one, it's like, who man, all right, I got to do something about that. That's probably but not one I... If you, don't wanna, if you don't want to learn anything about the, the consumption of alcohol, don't listen to that one because, yeah, it's just, like, b mind-blowing. But, yeah. Probably not one I want to listen to, but um, <laughs> I've got, you know, I, I, I do have a... There's already been... You know, when you, have, when you have people coming, you know, you ask ahead of time, like, okay, well, how do you take your coffee in the morning? Like, you know, you just want right. to make sure you, like, you have stuff in your kitchen and, right. you know, you, you put out the good bedding and all that. And so uh, the funny thing is that what came up the most was what alcohol do I have? And I was like, <laughs> well, slow down. I'm like, there's right. liquor stores everywhere. We'll, right. we'll take care of that We're when you get gonna here. live in the sticks. <laughs> we'll get you covered. Like, calm down. Um, so, so I will be toasting me and friends will be toasting your birthday for you. Uh, Thank but, you. But I mean, Hey, like it's just another trip around the sun. And I just wanted to make sure I got it on the air that I said, happy birthday to Andrew Tridwell. And actually, when this airs, I think it's going to be, for those that observe, it's going to be like Good Friday, the Friday right before Easter. So. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, yeah. And so it springs happy, in the air finally. Have a happy and, Easter, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And we're actually seeing some sun now. And, and I know it's it's sunny right now, and but it, it depends on where you're at, right? I mean, these little micro cells have been coming over. And, yeah. Not sunny here. <laughs> Not sunny there? You, you, you get rain to this this morning it's, or, it's, or at least it, cloudy? It's, it's super cloudy and there is talk of rain. So we'll see. 53 degrees yeah. and uh, gray, gray, gray skies. So we'll see. Yeah, down here it's 44 right now. So yeah, it's chilly. It's definitely, um, it's been a cold spring. Um, but at least yeah. we got sun. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that and actually able to get outside for a little bit. So, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So we might actually, we might, winter might actually come to an end this year. And if it does, yeah. there are some things that you can do in your DIY plans, um, that would be easier if it was probably warm and sunny out, but 
Yeah, Nonetheless. we can actually start talking about irrigation again and, and cleaning up the yard. And we've been kind of holding off on that just because it's it's kind of mean, you know, when it's snowing out and talking about gardening. It's, it's I know. a little passive aggressive kind of thing. Like, oh, we want it to be sunny, but, you know, it's not. Wishful. You know, wishful. Wishful thinking. Yeah, it's not so fun to be working outside when it's 35 degrees or 40 degrees. No. You know, and raining. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's been a, it's going to be a crazy week. Like you said, I've got, um, yeah, we just hired a new manager. So I've got to bring him on board and I've got to get everything ready for him. And then we ended up deciding to buy a new travel trailer because, you know, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree kind of thing. You know, not that I'm poor white anyway, but yeah, it's sort of kind of that way anyway. So yeah, we're going to do travel trailer, um, coming on Thursday. So that'll be fun. So yeah, good week coming ahead. Well, I mean, fun you, stuff, but crazy. I mean, you got more than a manager. You hired, you hired a, you hired a COO like you. Yeah. Yeah. We got to the point where I needed some help. Um, and we're growing so fast that I don't have the time to, to completely manage everybody. So we're bringing in a high level, um, COO. So yeah, it's been good. And I want to thank everybody out there and listening that, you know, you guys have really helped us grow and it's, it's, it's been really fun. Um, and it's fun to give that opportunity to somebody, um, to help us grow even more. So yeah, we, we've had quite a few meetings with this guy and he's really excited. Um, and he has helped grow a couple other, um, smaller companies into much larger companies. So that's the goal here. You know, we want to, we want to be able to take care of as many customers as we possibly can. So that's the goal in 2023 and 2024 and 2025 and so on and so on forth. Yeah. Just keep, keep growing this thing. Yeah. Yep. Keep getting opportunities to technicians to, you know, we, we've got quite a few kids that have come in and that were working menial labor jobs or, you know, food service jobs and have trained them on how to work in the trades. And they've moved on into trucks and are killing it, you know, taking care of customers getting five-star reviews and making much more money than they were buying houses. And, you know, I hate to say it, but even you know, going to the dentist, a few of them have gotten new teeth, which, you know, just, you know, unfortunately it is what it is in our area. Um, just poor dental care. Um, now they got health insurance and a couple of houses, even in California. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So looking forward to, to continuing on this path and growing and giving, giving more people opportunity to grow themselves and taking care of customers. Well, remind me when we finish this recording for me to submit my resume for it to, to be a technician. Cause <laughs> that all sounds really good. All sounds yeah, really technicians good. do really well. It's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, they, they can do really, really, really well. It's it, unfortunately, you know, it is not a young, it is not an, it is a young person's job business. Um, I know for myself and my back and my knees and stuff, it's like, ooh, working eight hours a day out there, 10 hours a day in the field. Oh, I can't do it at this point. It's, it's rough. I got a couple of guys that are my age that are, that are doing it, but, um, I don't know how they do it. Cause it's, it's, it's really hard on the body. It's really hard. But I think they lean on their, their apprentices more than um, they used to, but yeah, which is a good thing. Cause now the apprentices are learning. So, yeah. So you're saying that I'm not qualified for the job. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the judge of that. We'll, we'll argue about this I'm not this saying later. you're not qualified. I'm just giving clarification what is involved in the job. So. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't I know am... if you want to deal with, you know, you poop. know poop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mud and rain and snow working outside. Feels like that's all, feels like that's all we do anymore. Right. Is, right. is deal with the weather. All right. And well, then, have to... you know, so, soon to be, will it be like, they'll be working in, um, heat and weather. I know. heat exhaustion. We'll be having our safety topics about drinking enough water and getting enough electrolytes and making sure to use easy ups if you're digging in a hot day. But right now it's, you know, make sure you're bundled up so that you don't get frostbite. <laughs> I know. It's so crazy. So crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, I have some thinking to do. Um, yeah. okay. Yeah, Enough about me. Right. Let's talk about, so, yeah, so it, you. so it is springtime and you got a nice list for, um, you know, spring and earth day coming and all this stuff. And, oh, we're going to be in, we've got a couple events coming up, right? We may as well plug those. So can you remind me what we're doing? Um, well, we I'm gonna earth be, day in Lincoln. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, no, 
Um, there is an event in Sun City or something that uh, I don't. I'm not going to lie. I don't know anything about. That's happening. And it is it is the Earth Day so Earth celebration. Day on Earth. The- oh no, I think it is. It's a home service. Yeah, we're just we're down in Sun City in Lincoln on the 11th, and then I think we got a Earth Day in Sacramento. Yes, on um, the 23rd of April, we are part of a festival, and we do we will be sharing that. We shared it um, like once already, but um, there's a big, uh, really cool. Uh, festival happening on the 23rd, I believe it is, of, of April down in Sacramento. And uh, we're part of that. And so we'll be kind of plugging that a little bit and yeah. uh, cross our fingers for good weather. But I'm pretty sure we'll be safe April 23rd. I think it is in Sacramento. We should have good weather. We'll see. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, this year, you never know. So anyway, so we'll, so you gave me a good, a good line or a good list of things for yeah, Earth Day and DIY stuff. And these are going to be mainly energy saving DIY projects. So uh, here we go. You know, the installation of weather stripping, inspect the doors and windows for gaps and leaks and install weather stripping to prevent air leaks. Um, the other benefit that you have by installing um, weather stripping is it keeps the little critters out of your house, the little insects and bugs and stuff. Gross. Um, I know we had some issues with like lizards walking in at some point too. So, you know, if you got that gap underneath your door, things will come in, um, you know, especially, you know, when you got incremental weather, they want to kind of hide. And um, so seal up all your doors, seal up all your windows. And also remember that, you know, mice can get in through a a hole the size of a dime. So it, it doesn't take much space for the vermin and stuff to get in or the air. So weather strip, really important, really, really good. Um, and it'll save you a bunch of energy, especially if you do it yourself, it'll definitely pay for itself because it's weather stripping and stuff is pretty cheap. Um, use energy efficient light bulbs. Um, this crazy thing is, you know, they're talking about replacing traditional incandescent light bulbs. Um, I don't know how many people still have incandescent light bulbs because it's one of those things where you can still buy them, but, um, there's really no need to use incandescent light bulbs. They don't last long. Um, you're going to spend more money in the long run both in energy and the fact that you got to replace them every couple of years. An LED light bulb uses a tenth of the electricity that incandescent light bulb does. And you can just, you know, it, uh, it's obvious, like what was the, the easy bake oven? Remember the easy bake oven? What did it heat with? An incandescent light bulb. That's how much heat that, that those light bulbs put out. An LED, if you try to do that with an LED, they, they burn so cool. There's so much, there's so little energy loss in heat that it makes them so much more efficient. Um, so they are so much more efficient and even more efficient than an, uh, incandescent, or not, excuse me, not incandescent, but a fluorescent light bulb, way more efficient than a fluorescent light bulb. Um, I know in our office, we've replaced all of our, um, tube lights with led strips and seeing a major, um, major decrease in the amount of money that we're spending on electricity in our office space. So if you still have incandescent light bulbs or even fluorescent light bulbs, it's really a good idea to change out to LED. I mean, they, and they last a long time, like new LED or new light fixtures. A lot of them don't even come with light bulbs anymore. They just have the lights built into them because they will last you like 10 to 20 years. So they're not even, they don't even have replaceable bulbs anymore. You just replace the whole fixture. So, I mean, that's how long these things last. So if you do have any incandescent light bulbs at this point, yeah, definitely change an LED. I want, to ask, I want to put you, yes, yes, sir. I have a question. Um, I want to put you on the spot about something that's related maybe to saving energy. So I have uh, someone coming tomorrow in the midst of everything, of course, to install a Nest um, thermostat. And yeah. so listen, I feel like I should know what the benefits of this are, but I don't. Um, so a Nest. So is the landlord putting that in for you or are you putting that in? Oh, I'm not putting Oh, nice. Oh, excellent. Yeah, because they're not cheap. Yeah. Well, good, because what I pay isn't cheap either. But um, I I, I should have have something above that as far as I'm concerned. But what what would I, so from a user perspective, it's just going to be just as easy for me to use as whatever I have now. But what what is the benefit to like the Nest? Why do people do that? Is that supposed to help? Well, the Nest is cool because it it learns your habits. Okay. So, um, but it is kind of big brothery. I mean, like Nest is a, a... a product that um, has an ex- exceptional value because of the information that it's gathering. Um, it's more it's more valuable not on the product, but a, more valuable because of the information. It's an information gatherer. Um, 
But in any event, what are some of the benefits to you? It does learn your habits. So it knows when to turn it on and when to turn it off. You can program it when to turn on and when to turn off. So if you've got a schedule, it works really great. Mm. Um, you know, you can set it to, to set back the temperature at night down to, you know, 65, 68, whatever you like, and then come back up to back, back up to 69, 70, 72, whatever you want during the day or during the times when you're home. Um, the programmable thing didn't really work so great in our lifestyle with my wife because my wife was home sporadically and I kind of programmed it for my schedule and she didn't like it. She got kind of mad at it. So she just started turning it up and down. Um, but one of the, the ni other nice things though about Nest or Wi-Fi thermostats, mm -hmm. you know, they are gathering information. But one of the nice things is you can load the app onto your phone and you can actually turn your thermostat up or down when you're not home. Like I've got, I've got them in, we've got them in our place in St. Paul and we've got them in our place in Grass Valley and I can remotely check the, the temperature and make sure the thermostat's down. Like our place in St. Paul, we rent. So, um, you know, I am big brother. Um, I can see where the, cause we pay for the electricity on that rental. Cause it's kind of, we do it through the traveling nurses and I can see where they're, they're setting the thermostat or if they're not home, or if they've left the building, I can turn the temperature down. Um, so that just, you know, make sure that keeps the house warm enough so the pipes don't freeze, but not heating the place. You know, turn it down like 45 degrees. Um, so that's really nice. It's really cool to be able to, you know, if you go on a trip and come home, you can turn the temperature up, especially during the winter. It's nice to be able to turn the temperature up and give it like an hour or two to heat up. And so it heats up the couch and heats up the tables and heats everything up so that when you come home, um, if, especially in Nevada County where the, inside temperature can get down to, you know, depending on where you set it. Like I said, ours at 45, it'll get down to 45 during the winter time inside. And then it takes a couple, two, three, four hours before the couch and the, and the, the tables and everything else start to heat up. So it much, it's much more comfortable. So mm -hmm. I really, I really like their, um, Wi-Fi thermostats. And actually with this new trailer, <laughs> I found a Wi-Fi thermostat for the trailer and I'm going to put in <laughs> Just well, that, that makes sense. That much me. of a dork. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, so I had a, I have a brother-in-law who, um, his, his teenage son is, he's now not a teenager. He's moved on. But when he was staying at the house, right. Um, Dom would be at work and he could see what Dustin was doing with the thermostat oh, yeah. and he would get on there and turn it down. So I was like, that's kind of, I mean, I, for that perspective, I think that's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I've done that when, when our kids were home by themselves and come to find out that they, you know, turn the AC down to like 65. I'm like, Dude. Nope. <laughs> nope. Turn it back up, to, back up to 72, you know, to 72 to 75, somewhere in there. It's like, it's summertime. You don't need a ice box, you know? Yeah. So yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool with teenagers. And actually you can actually even do that. I had a friend, I put a tankless water heater for a friend and um, his son was a teenager and he was taking really long showers. And so he would, after about 10 minutes, he would, had a remote thermostat and he would just turn the temperature down on the, on the, on I'll the tankless water heater. So it got cold and caught him out of the shower. That'll so. do it. <laughs> so these, the, as, as parents, these Wi-Fi thermostats and stuff, they're amazing. You know, whether it's on the tankless water heater or on a, um, the H the HVAC system, heating and air system. So, yeah. Um, so cool. You're getting an S that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, Wow, you took one of the things. Okay, yeah. So that's that was the next thing. Oh, you, you, you must have read this. I you maybe have, even wrote this. I, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been a couple of weeks. I don't remember what's on yeah. my paper. I don't remember. That was good. Um, this one is one of the. This is a. This is a level like five on the on the maybe even eight on the DIY thing. Um, seal air ducts. Seal any air ducts in your home with duct sealant or metal tape to prevent, prevent air leaks. Um, if you're, if you can access them relatively easily, um, yeah, do it. Most of them are in crawl spaces or in attics. So if you're not, um, comfortable with, you know, crawl spaces and attics, you probably don't want to do it. But you know, if you're, if your heating and air system is 20 years old or older, it's probably not installed very well. Mm -hmm. Um, just speaking from experience, because when I was in the when I was in the field in, installing heating and air systems, 
Um, we screwed the, the, the ducks together or zip tied the ducks together and put some tape on them. And that was, that was the extent, extent of our installation. Um, and that was just industry standard. Now, um, we have to, when we install a new system in California, we have to have a, um, a duck seat or duck testing company come out, a third party oh. come out and actually test the ducks for leakage. And we have to make sure that all the ducks are sealed. So we do that anyway now. Um, and you know, back in the day, it, they, we didn't, didn't really matter. You could have a huge hole and they would never know. Um, so it's not a bad idea to kind of, at least the best thing you can do is go look underneath. If you can't crawl underneath your house, crawl underneath your house and take a look at all the ducks and make sure none of them separated. Cause that's pretty common. Um, make sure there's no vermin in them. We've had quite a few situations where rats or raccoons have gotten into the ductwork and made nests. Um, you don't want that stuff inside your house because you know what they do when they're chilling. Um, but if you do decide to do this, it, it's a, it's a big job, but it is something you, that DIY high level DIY person can do. Um, this one is one of those things that, you know, it's, we don't really utilize these window films. We don't really utilize them much in California. It's more for really extreme weathers, like in the Midwest and, and, um, even the Southeast where you've got really hot, humid days. Um, but window film, applying window film to your windows to block out heat in the summer and retain heat in the winter. Um, you can do that. Your best bet is really, if you haven't, if you don't have double pane windows yet, yeah. If you've got double pane windows, eh, you're not going to, not going to realize much of a savings because your windows are probably doing a pretty good job. Uh, but if, if you do have single pane windows, it is a, it is an inexpensive way to get around, um, not having them. And if you're a renter, that's pretty good. Especially if you got single pane windows, if you're a renter, definitely do this. Cause it, it's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, but in summertime, it's not really great for us. Cause you know, the fact that we open our windows during the summertime typically, cause at night it cools off in, in the foothills. So you do lose that ability when you put the film on, but wintertime it's great. Cause you're not gonna open the windows. Um, insulating hot water pipes, wrapping hot water pipes with insulation to prevent heat loss and reduce the amount of energy needed to heat the water. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily reduce the amount of energy to heat the water, but it does reduce the amount of energy that is, um, dissipated from the pipes. So, um, it is a, it is code now when we do a, um, when we go and do a, a new installation of, of plumbing or or rehab of old plumbing, we have to insulate all the hot water pipes. You will, you will realize the savings. Um, and especially if you have, um, a hot water loop. So like if you turn the tap on and you know, some people always, you know, the complaint we always get, you know, like it takes five minutes for me to get hot water at my, my bathroom faucet. So we'll put in a loop where the hot water is circulating a recirculating loop in the entire plumbing system. So you've got hot water that's in the pipes at all times. Um, that you will see, see a huge savings if you insulate the pipes because of the fact that if it's not insulated, all you're really doing is building a nice little radiant loop. Like that's what we build for, that's how radiators work is exposed copper pipes with fins on them where it cools off. And oh my gosh, yeah, we're at the end of our show. How'd that happen? <laughs> I got, I got the Cut. time to kill it. All right. <laughs> So, um, if you need any help with plumbing, electrical, heating, or an air, you can reach us at 230-230-9092, 530-230-9092. You can reach us on the web. I'm going to try this and not flub it this time at easyasabt.com. That's easyasabt.com. Or you can also find us at abtplumbing.com. Um, like us on Facebook. We share a lot of this information and you can see us if you want. You can like us on Facebook on you got this and ABT and you can actually see these videos. And, um, yeah, I actually watched a couple and I realized I scratched my head a lot. So I'm trying not to do that anymore. So anyway, thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye.